Hi everyone, welcome back. In this section we're going to look at double integrals over general regions. So let's have a look at an example or sample problem first. We're going to find the volume of the solid that lies underneath the plane and above the region in the xy plane that's bounded by y equals x and y equals x to the fourth. So I've got a sketch shown here but let's go to a dynamic version. So there's our region in the plane that's sketched in gray down below. And we are in interested in integrating our function, which is this linear function whose graph is the plane, integrating that function over this shaded region in the plane. What that is going to produce is it's going to produce the volume of this resulting object. So this is the object we are interested in getting the volume of. So we're integrating the plane over that region in the domain. So that gray region, which we can see down below here, we're integrating over that region. That's not a rectangle. In the previous section, we were integrating functions over rectangles. Here, we're integrating functions over general regions. So that gray region, which is no longer a rectangle. How do we do it? That's what we're going to learn today. So let's go back to our notes and talk a little bit about the kinds of regions we can have in the plane, at least the, the basic kinds of regions we can have in our domain. So first we can have a vertically simple region. All this means is that our y values are trapped between two curves. So maybe we've got an upper curve on our region and we've got a lower curve on our region they could come together, so maybe I'll even do that. They'll, they'll, they could come together. The upper and the lower one could come together at a point. So the point is we've got some upper curve and some lower curve for our region. And our x values just range between the values a and b. So our region looks something like this. This is what we call vertically simple. We've got an upper curve y is equal to some function of x, we'll call it g2 of x. We got a lower curve, y is equal to g1 of x. So this is going to be the set of all points. This region it consists of the set of all points x, y, such that x is somewhere between a and b, and the y values are trapped between these two functions. It's trapped between g1 of x and g2 of x. So that's a vertically simple region. A horizontally simple region, in this case, it's the left and right boundaries to this region that are given by curves. And again, they could come together, but I'll keep them separate here. So we've got the left and the right parts of our boundary, our, our boundary or our region are given by these curves. So y is going to range from some value c to some value d. But x, in this case, there's our x-axis, our horizontal axes. So the left is going to be x is some function, we'll call it h1 of y. And the right curve is given by x is equal to h2 of y. And our region consists of the set of all points x and y such that y is between c and d, and x is between h1 of y and h2 of y. And that's a horizontally simple region. Now if we're interested in integrating some function of two variables over this region, what we want to do is we want to integrate over all points in this region against our function. So the way we can do that is we can fix some particular x value integrate along the vertical line segment. In the case, it's a vertically simple region, so we integrate along the vertical line segment first. That gives us our integral of our function with respect to y, as y ranges between the lower points in our region, they live on the g1 of x curve, up to the upper point in our region, the g2 of x curve. And then once we've done that, then we let that line segment sweep out our region. So we integrate over the x values from a to b. So that's, maybe I'll put that in a different color. Then we sweep out that region, and that's this outermost integral. 
Similarly, if it was a horizontally simple region, we could integrate, you know, pick some fixed y value first, integrate in the horizontal direction, that is, as x goes, for, or integral with respect to x, as x ranges between h1 of y to h2 of y, and then let that line segment, or let that y value sweep out all y values from c to d. So the second integral will be the integral of y, y equals c, all the way up to y equals d, the integral with respect to y. So that's how we can go ahead and compute these integrals over these general regions. Notice that the limits of integration of the innermost integral are not constants anymore. They depend on these bounding curves. But the second integral that we compute, it's got constants as its limits of integration. So the final answer in this case will be some numerical value because we will have integrated away both of those variables. Let's have a look at an example. So we want to find or evaluate the integral of e to the y over x as y ranges from 0 to x cubed and x ranges from 0 to 2. So again, we've got to pay particular attention to the fact that the inner integral is with respect to y, so those limits of integration are y values, and the outer one is x. So that means the region we are interested in is y ranges from 0 to x cubed, whereas x ranges over the values from 0 to 2. So that's our region. Maybe I'll just indicate that here. Region. That's the region we are interested in. So let's sketch it. It's always a good idea to sketch the region. We don't need to sketch the function or the integrand, but it's always a good idea to sketch the region when you're working on problems like this. So y is going to go from 0 up to x cubed. So I'll draw the x cubed curve in. So y is equal to x cubed. And x is going from 0 to 2. So if I throw a 2 down there and there's a 0, then our region is this region here. That's the region we are integrating over. What kind of region is it? Well, it's vertically simple. If I draw a vertical line, no matter where I draw that vertical line, the lower curve is given by the constant function y equals 0, and the upper curve is given by y equals x cubed. So we've got a vertically simple region. So it's vertically simple. And we can go ahead and compute our integral. The way we're going to compute our integral is exactly how it's laid out here. We are going to do our inner integral first, the integral from 0 to x cubed, e to the y over x dy. Once we've computed that integral, then we'll do the outermost integral with respect to x. The key thing to note about that inner integral is the variable of integration is y, so that's really all I'm paying attention to is that y variable. Once I've computed the antiderivative, I evaluate at the endpoints, so I replace the y's with the upper limit of integration, which is x cubed, and the lower limit of integration, which is 0, and so I get an expression involving x alone. So that innermost integral is going to evaluate to some function of x, which then I integrate in the next step. So let's do that innermost integral. So the antiderivative of e to the y over x, so that's an exponential, so it anti-differentiates to e to the y over x, and I've got an x out front. So essentially I've done a substitution here, or you can think about what do I need to adjust by, because when I take the derivative, I'll just erase that x temporarily, when I take the derivative of e to the y over x, I get e to the y over x times the derivative of that function in the exponent with respect to y. So that derivative will be times 1 over x. So it will be e to the y over x times 1 over x. But if I look in the integrand above, I don't have a 1 over x there. I just have a 1 sitting in front. So I can adjust by making sure I stick that constant x, constant relative to y, in front. So now the derivative is e to the y over x times x times 1 over x. So the x and the 1 over x cancel, and they give me that integrand above. So I'm in good shape. As I said, another way to do this is you can maybe think about substitution. u is equal to y over x, and do your substitution that way. This goes from 0 to x cubed. 
So that's still the inner integral we're evaluating. Now we can go ahead and plug those values in. Again, we're plugging those values in for y. Sometimes for the first little bit it will help you to maybe just write y equals just to remind you that those are y values. Um, once you get a feel for this you'll realize that you don't have to write the y in there because you can just look in the previous line to see oh yeah okay those limits of integration those were y values. So I plug those in for y and I get x e plugging x cubed in for y I get x cubed over x or that's x squared minus and then x times e to the plug in 0 for y. That's e to the 0 which is 1 and so this is what it evaluates out to. Now we can go ahead and compute the next integral. The next integral is going to be the antiderivative of x e to the x squared. So that's a half e to the x squared. Again you can use a substitution there or you could maybe eyeball this one. I just did it as a, well the substitution is really what's going on in my head. I'm looking at it saying the derivative of the exponent is in front pretty much. The derivative of the exponent is 2x and that's pretty much sitting out front. So I know that the antiderivative is e to the x squared and then I just have to adjust by whatever constant needs to be in front so that the result ends up giving me the x e to the x squared as its derivative. What's the antiderivative of negative x? That's negative x squared over 2 and then we are evaluating from 0 to 2. So there's our second integral or our outermost integral and so that's going to be 1 half e to the fourth minus 2 and then minus what we get by plugging 0 in that's a half and then minus 0 so our final answer is 1 half e to the fourth and then we get minus 2 minus 1 half is minus 5 halves. And so there's our final result. Alright, so this is part one of the video. We've introduced integrals over general regions and how to compute them, how to recognize what kind of region it is, whether it's vertically simple or horizontally simple, and then which order to do the integrals in. And we've done an example where we had a vertically simple region and we've done the integral. I'm going to split this video off now into a second part where we just do a bunch more examples. We're just going to do, go through about three or four more examples and then there'll be a third part to the video where we look at uh, very quickly the properties of the double integral again. We looked at them in 15.1 but we'll look at the properties of double integrals again and then we'll see how to use those properties to, for example, estimate the value of a double integral given that we actually can't compute an antiderivative or that an antiderivative would be a very difficult problem to, 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 to compute and so in that case we just do the best we can and we estimate the value of the double integral. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.